Let's pick up where we left off in the previous video by working with smart materials and I want to expand the preview window. Sometimes if you don't see any bump value, it may be just a scale of the map. I can click on the scale icon and drag to the left or right to make adjustments. I can go ahead and hide this curvature map. So I will choose the rough plastic layer. I can zoom in if I need. If we are happy with what we see in the preview window, we can proceed to click on the model and have 3 d Coat fill it with that material. It's a relative match to what we see in our reference image. Okay, I think I will now look for a metal smart material. Let me choose something like that. Let me choose the check tip paint layer. Okay. So let's go back to semi-gloss plastic. And let's say I forgot to paint this part at the bottom while I was using the glossy paint material. I can go back to the smart material itself or go to the Windows menu under panels and find the material history panel. What it will do is, as the name implies, show a history of materials that were selected or utilized on any given layer. If I right click on the material thumbnail and choose attach to current layer, it will allow me to make quick adjustments in the future, meaning I can select other materials or make quick edits and it will only change what has already been painted on this layer. With this material still selected, I can click on this bottom portion that did not get painted earlier. And it seems I missed this one small part earlier as well. Okay, so let's go to a paint subfolder and I will click on the yellow paint material. Each time I click on the thumbnail of a new material, 3D Coat simply replaces the paint that was already applied with the other material with the new one. If at any point I decide I want to go back to the original smart material, I can just click that thumbnail in the material history panel and it will return to that specific material. As mentioned in the pop-up warning that you see here in the center of the screen, if you need to make adjustments to the placement or the scale of the map that is involved in the smart material, such as changing the scale of the bump noise, you need to first detach the material make the adjustment and then you can reattach it. With that detached, I can use the fill tool to fill another part of the model that has not yet been painted. So I will go ahead and click on that part to fill it with the yellow paint. So material history, I can put that down there. Next, I will select the LCD paint layer. I'll click on the foreground color swatch and switch that to black. And I don't need depth or glossiness. In the material control panel, I'll click the X icon to clear the smart material. And I'll click on the part where the LCD screen is supposed to be. And then uh, go to an orthographic view. If you need to choose a different view, you can always click on the camera icon in the upper right and pick one here or use the corresponding hotkey. Uh, zoom in and get squared up here. And then what I want to do now is choose a subfolder that I had previously made just for decals, but you can add them in by clicking here, I've already brought it in. So I'm just going to uh, choose either one of these. And when I click it a second time, you can see that the projection type is from camera, which is a flat 2D image projection. I'll click cancel because I don't need to make any adjustments. Except for a few adjustments in the material control panel, I click the reset icon. We can make some basic adjustments from the upper right corner of the panel, or we can right click on this little yellow dot to open up a more advanced gizmo.
Now when I left mouse button click and drag, I can move it about in the scene, or I could click the directional handle to move it along a single axis. I could also scale it down globally here, or scale it along an axis. I will now make some adjustments to properly place and scale this decal. I can hide the gizmo by right mouse button clicking on it again. Let's go ahead and add another layer. LCD text. I'll click on the foreground color swatch and choose white as my color. Next, I wanna to go to the E panel and select a shape draw mode. In this case, I guess a circle would work best. And click here to drag it. If I need, just like in Photoshop, I can hit the space bar to move it around and then just release the space bar when I am done. Then release my stylus and it will paint it. Just as an LCD screen emits light, we want to make this specific layer emissive. To do that, all I need is to change the blending mode to emissive with this LCD layer. If I want, I can make it glossy as well. I'll come out of orthographic view by hitting the five key on the number pad. Now I am in perspective view. And so, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and add some glossiness by making sure we have the right layer selected and enabling the glossiness channel. I'll also disable color and depth because I don't need it at the moment. And in the E panel, I need to switch to a brush draw mode in order to pick and fill with the fill tool. When I look from different angles, I can see that the glossiness was indeed applied. All right, before we conclude, I want to add a few more decals, and that includes the plus and minus, as well as the power button, then the logo text here on the side. So let's bring those in one at a time, and I will speed up the playback while I add these. I will go to an orthographic view by hitting the five key on a number pad and I can go to, let's say a back view where I click outside the object and drag to the right to zoom in. Middle mouse click, drag to pan. I will create another layer. Let me put that above the rough plastic. I'll enable color, but depth, I don't necessarily need that. And uh, let's go ahead and add the power button first since it's already selected. I can reset it. Right click the little yellow dot that we see to bring up the gizmo so I can place it where I need. And uh, scale it in. Let me hit the uh, wireframe to see <clears throat> um, where this midpoint is. It's not so easy. So I can right click when I'm done. I could click with a fill tool because it does have an alpha channel, but what I want to do instead is choose the brush tool and I can choose the circle shape draw mode. And also want to check ignore back facing because I don't want to project this through the model. Let's go ahead and click and drag. All right. I will speed up the playback once again while I do the other decals using the very same technique. I think that looks about right, so I will right mouse button click on the center point to hide the gizmo. And next, above the semi-gloss plastic layer, I want to create a new one. And 
I don't necessarily need depth or the glossiness. I just want to apply color. I can brush that on or I can use something like a rectangular lasso. Okay, I can hide the material now and hit the five key on the number pad to come out of the orthographic view and back into a perspective view. Uh, we are ready to export. But before I do that, I want to first step into the render workspace to get an idea of what it will look like when rendered in an external application or render. So I'm going to turn off the real time render for just a moment. I can also turn screen space reflections on and illumination. This scene already has HDRI lighting and it has an extra light. I can change the color and the rotation angle, the height and whatnot. Okay, so I made some adjustments to the HDRI map and I wanted to show an even better example of what this will look like in a production render in an external application. 3Coat actually has RenderMan integration and it's somewhat limited compared to what you would find in other 3D applications, but for the purposes of getting a nice still image, it works quite well. You can use the commercial license or the non-commercial license, whichever applies. So let's go ahead and switch here in the upper right corner to RenderMan. You can adjust the settings here, so let's go ahead and click Render Preview. What 3D Code is actually doing is it's exporting all the content in the scene to the external render, and we can see the rendering take place inside this preview panel that will pop up. If I wanted to make some additional adjustments, I can do that and just click the Render Preview button once again to restart the render. As an example, I'm going to adjust the exposure. So let's click the cancel render icon. And we also happen to have the denoise icon here that we can click to enable as well. I'll go ahead and click the cancel render icon now. I'll push the preview panel off to the second monitor and make a few adjustments to the exposure and then the environment light. With that done, I'll click render preview one more time and bring the render preview window back to this monitor. And when it's finished with the maximum samples that you set, you can save it out through the file menu if you like. Okay, and that's enough of this short sample of RenderMan integration in 3D Coat. Let's now switch gears to exporting from the application. Let's go to the file menu. We would want to point where we want the geometry to be placed and also the export texture location as well. And then if we want, we can choose an export preset based on our chosen render engine. And when we are happy with all of the settings, we can click the export button. And with that, we will bring this two part series to a conclusion. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.